The decision today is not without cost here at home. Putin's war is already hurting American families at the gas pump. Since Putin began his military buildup on Ukrainian borders, just since then, the price of the gas at the pump in America went up 75 cents. And with this action, it's going to go up further. Uh, let, me, let me say this. To the oil and gas companies and to the finance firms that back them, we understand Putin's war against the people of Ukraine is causing prices to rise. We get that. That's self-evident. But, 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 but. It's no excuse to exercise excessive price increases or padding profits or any kind of effort to exploit this situation or, Amer or American uh, consumers. Exploit them. So that was Joe Biden a few days ago saying that the war in Ukraine was causing an increase in gas prices. But he also warned oil companies not to price gouge too much and not to try to make too much profits during this time. But is it really true? Is it really the war in Ukraine that's leading to the increase in gas prices? Well, many, including Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, think that it's not. As many have noticed, the per barrel cost of oil is actually a lot less than it was back in 2008 when prices were about the same. And yet, prices are slightly higher today. So think about that. The per barrel price of oil has actually gone down over the past 14 years, and yet the price is significantly higher than it has been. It's almost like, hear me out, oil companies keep gradually increasing the prices at the pump because they just want more money from consumers, and they know consumers will be more adjusted to and more willing to accept that price as normal. It's almost like capitalism is fundamentally based off of making tons of money without actually producing anything more. Gasoline isn't becoming more innovative. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's quite regressive and is literally destroying the planet. And it's not really becoming more scarce. You can see that by the per barrel cost. So what really is just happening is they're just taking in whatever profits they can get away with. But that is why Bernie Sanders, Ro Khanna, and Elizabeth Warren are actually working on a plan to try to deal with price gouging. One of these plans would include putting a 50% tax on these oil companies on the difference in price between the price that exists now and the price in 2014. So that 50% of the increase would be taken in taxes and then would be distributed to average Americans, which would end up being about 250 to 400 dollars a year. Another idea that's being floated around is price control. And now a lot of people are like, price controls? A windfall tax? My goodness gracious, this must be socialism. No, socialism would be nationalizing the oil industry so they wouldn't be able to price gouge at all, and that prices would be able to be directly controlled to make sure that our cost of living doesn't go up. And while that would be great, unfortunately, our Congress isn't going to pass anything like that anytime soon. So this policy that still operates under the capitalist for framework is just an idea of putting a windfall tax or price controls on the cost of oil to make sure that working class Americans are able to get to work and buy their groceries without an extreme expense. Because remember, your groceries the cost of them are impacted by the cost of oil because the more expensive it is to ship something from one place to another, the more expensive it is going to be to buy it. Which is why socialist societies that organize based around human needs not only have price controls on these basic necessities, but also usually have a lot of state involvement in the supply chain to make sure that the most underserved areas actually are continuing to get food at a reasonable cost. And might even subsidize some of the at-the-register expenses of paying for things like food. With this policy coming from Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren is a direct challenge to these oil companies claiming that they are in fact price gouging and that it has nothing to do with the war in Ukraine. Just like many other industries were using the pandemic as justification to raise their prices, like for example, landlords, guess what? The pandemic had no impact over their mortgages and yet they're still ain't trying to charge the average American a heck of a lot more for rent. But because everybody's busy paying attention to something else, we just accept that, oh yeah, I guess it makes sense that rent would increase, I guess it makes sense that oil prices would increase, when the truth is our cost of living should be much, much lower than it is today. Which is why it's a good thing that people like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are actually willing to step up and challenge these companies because they are just a few of a small group of elected representatives that are willing to acknowledge the exploitative nature of these companies having such a stranglehold over something that is necessary in order to keep our economy going and in order to put food on people's table. Now in the long term, obviously we should replace the entire fossil fuel economy with renewable energies, but in the short term, people gotta put food on their table. 
And so while Joe Biden said that he wouldn't accept price gouging, now Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and a handful of other representatives are trying to put his words to the test to see if he actually is willing to deal with the price gouging that is currently happening when it comes to the price you're paying at the pump. This is Ben Corolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to stay up to date with my content, you can follow me at Benjamin Corolla on Twitter. And lastly, to those of you who might be wondering or have noticed, my pronouns are in fact she, her.